Hello, I'm Jerry Hendricks, and welcome to our midweek conversation at First Baptist Sweetwater, where we strive to be the first responders of God's love. I'm in studio with my friend. Welcome back, Teak. Good to see you. Good to be back. It's been, what, a month? It, it, yep. It's been wow. a while. Something wrong with my chair. Has somebody been sitting in my <laughs> <Someone> chair? Is... <laughs> Somebody's been sitting in my chair. Uh, you wouldn't notice that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel the same. <laughs> so uh, we uh, we started a series. Uh, we did a series that we uh, just finished mm-hmm. on the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, we invited our friend right. Ryan Street back over to share a little bit with our audience about uh, his knowledge of the background of that mm-hmm. text, and it was really good. I think folks enjoyed. Uh, the change of pace, uh, oh, yeah. the camaraderie of uh, of Ryan being with us. Right. Yeah. So anyways, uh, and you had some time off. Yeah. But I got to watch y'all, so it was yeah. fun. <laughs> well, th- thanks for watching. Yeah. One more viewer. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, so <clears throat> we uh, have been... Uh, been kind of busy with stuff, mm-hmm. you know, the, with getting into the, the, I guess we're past the heart of the fall season. I mean, it's right. really, we're, we're on the cusp of winter of Advent. Yep. And so I said it before you did. Well, I won't say it because yeah. <laughs> we've still got Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, you say so you've paired back. Now that we're in November, I will stall and I won't talk about it until we get to oh, okay. Thanksgiving. So there is a routine here. There, Yeah. Because I'm one of those, you can't jump. There's an important holiday coming up. It's called Thanksgiving. Yeah. When we're thankful, which kind of fits with the gospel. <laughs> it does. It does kind of fit with the yeah. gospel. So uh, we, we had the conversation Sunday morning. One of my kids knows how I feel about that. And she jumped in and said, well, you know, I've been celebrating Christmas since last week or something like that. And I said, really? Why? Well, to celebrate Jesus. I said, and what did you do to celebrate Jesus? Well, I wore a Christmas sweater. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure there's much more to go with that conversation. No, I won. Yeah, oh, you won. It yeah, was really, over. <laughs> really quickly, I won. It was over. <laughs> That's great. Well, we are. Uh, this is our, and I guess it's our second podcast of November. Right. Yeah. And uh, since it came, the, the way the month started, mm-hmm. kind of started right on our podcast schedule. But uh, we're... Even though it's only the second one, we're kind of deep into the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get to do a lot of special things uh, from this point till the end of the year, yeah. actually. And, yeah. you know, there are things that have been a part of our congregation for a long time, but uh, every congregation has their own rhythm for this season. Right. And so for us, it all kicks off with uh, Operation Christmas Child. Right. Something we've been doing for a long time, partnering with. Um Samaritan's Purse, and right. we're a relay center for that. And the first year, we probably tell this every year, the first year they said, yeah, if you'll do this for us, it'll probably add like 300 boxes. We had over 1,100 that year. Yeah. And we're like, what? Yeah. And so that's really cool. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Well, and I took a call this morning from someone inquiring on the drop-off schedule from uh, right. in our from our area. So uh, people uh, share that rhythm with us, and we're excited about that. A lot of shoe mm. boxes left the building on Sunday, we'll right. have more uh, throughout the week, and then again uh, some more on Sunday before we start collecting on the twentieth. Yeah, and we had a map, or we have a map in the foyer um, with pins placed in all the countries where shoeboxes have gone. Right, and so it's really cool. Over well, uh, 170. And, yeah, and we were talking that you know it's important, and we've tried to do this in, in the way that we announce it, not assuming that everybody knows what this uh, ministry is, right. and uh, so I think it's always. When, when we're on target with what we intend to do and we were able to explain to people some of these initiatives or some, some nuances to the way that we, we function out here on a regular basis. But mm-hmm. it's always fun to see new people embrace those traditions. You have people who've left and, and or moved away from here who still are a part of that with us, right. uh, like the Setons. Yes. And uh, that's... Uh, been a big part of their tradition that they have carried with them, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, so they still have given us some shout outs on social media. For I got that. a picture from Cassidy um, yesterday. They were packing their boxes. Yeah, already. Yep. Yeah. Well, and it's so that that's fun that we have these different ways that we can connect uh, and begin. I feel like in an appropriate way to start to uh, jump start this season. Right. 
And then the following thing that we have is uh, something that we started before COVID, but it wasn't what we envisioned last year. Mm -hmm. And last year we seem to have nailed it. We have a Sunday of communion Right. And it's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Right. And um, we may have to look at that for next year because didn't you say that next year Thanksgiving all, comes earlier? Yeah. Yeah. All the Advent days are in December yeah. next year. So that's, that's kind of what prompted this in the first place was that the way that calendar rotates for us year in, year out. But uh, last year we kind of locked on in on this idea because we'd been in COVID. We hadn't had any large gatherings around a mm -hmm. meal. And so we had a potluck meal. We provide fried chicken and people bring sides and desserts. And we had a ton of people downstairs. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had to bring out more tables and chairs. Yep, I remember that. Uh, and so. And good food. And great food. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and the cool thing is, it, it's, it's some, in some way, what we're talking about is that we understand on that particular Sunday that people have zeroed in on gathering it around the table. There, mm -hmm. it seems like vac vac more, there's, there's more. I think the day of, or around Thanksgiving holidays is the highest travel day of the year. Hmm. I think even more so than Christmas. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> and so people are thinking about it and they have plans and they're looking forward to that. And we know that it's going to be gathered around a table right. of some sort. Right. Uh, even if the food's just on the table and you take it elsewhere in, in the down. house. Yeah. But uh, so we're we're using that opportunity to come to the table as well, where we uh, have a time of communion. And so this year, um, what we're going to do is have the worship service centered around the communion experience. And so we're going to do some things that we haven't done before uh, to experiment just a little bit. And I yes. think it's going to be a good, uh, good Sunday for us uh, to enjoy. Uh, not just the worship service, but also the meal together and have a great time. Yeah, I think if you were to say it, this experience is going to focus on the theology of communion. Right, more than, in, yes. And yes. it's going to be good. Well, and, and I've so been... So if you think about your faith, this is a good Sunday to be here. Yes, exactly. If you're, if there, if you're yeah, contemplative on that at all, right. this is a good way, a good experience to kind of think through that on some some deeper levels and I know it's it's uh, it's challenged me uh, this year in, in getting accustomed to some of these uh, traditions and so I'm if you don't think that. about your faith we'll have a potluck afterwards so come for worship <laughs> and then come <laughs> to the potluck nothing wrong with some fried chicken <laughs> that is true <laughs> that, that should true. fit into your theology somewhere <laughs> yes. at some point in time <laughs> and then we move into the Advent season and right. some other giving initiatives but uh, we'll be uh, using the, the Christian calendar to guide us. I still haven't made the decision if I'm going with uh, the gospel readings or the readings from Isaiah. Uh, that's a bit of a challenge for me to step out of my comfort zone of the gospels right. and, and jump into this. But uh, <clears throat> this year, uh, Teague and I go through this uh, b because of, of uh, well, following the lectionary and mm -hmm. then also being aware of uh, uh of what he's teaching in student ministry right. and, and how that can pair well with what we're doing on sun, uh, upstairs or during our worship. Yep. But um, I remember thinking last time that the cycle came around for the Isaiah passages that I should probably, you know, give that a, a spin. They're good. They're and, good. And I'll take, I may take your lead on that. Uh, I like them. We're, yeah. we're doing youth and it just, it tells the story in a different way. Cause you'll hear, the Christmas story, even if you just watch Charlie Brown Christmas special. Um, so you'll hear that, but right. the Isaiah one is really good. Well, and I think the other thing <clears throat> we, you and I have not made any, made it a, tried to make it a secret that the lectionary is relatively new to us. Right. And still there's so much more that we can learn and understand mm -hmm. from it. And so it was Ryan who was even talking to us uh, right. just uh, over coffee one afternoon mm -hmm. about that, that particular rhythm for those Sundays leading up to Advent. Right. And so you and I, I think both of us agreed that we had never looked at it that way before. No. Yeah. No. And so that's going to be fun uh, to consider those passages. It'll be more of a part of our reading, I guess, and, and preparation because right. we're out these next, uh, well, we've already kind of outlined our next two Sundays. Mm -hmm. But it does start to make more sense, which, again, is kind of why we really like being able to use the Christian calendar and the teachings uh, on an annual basis. Yeah, it was helpful having him in there because 
that first Sunday of Advent is always, it's weird text. It's end times yeah. and things like that. Um, but using the Isaiah passage, it, it makes you think about the last days differently. And so it right. worked out really well. Yeah. And it, uh, so what we're talking about here is that the the whole idea of Advent is, is really learning the anticipation right. of the birth of Christ and then the celebration that goes along with that. And there's many parts to that that fall naturally with the church uh, with all kinds of activities and things that we're doing. Right. What's different when, when you step back and you look at those texts is that first text has to do with the second coming. Right. Which is the lead conversation for anticipation. Right. And uh, so Advent means the coming of Christ and the coming again of Christ. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we don't think about how um, what what I've said in the past, how kind of awkward that that <laughs> sermon is to go, you're we've turned the corner right. at that point, Teak, and you're at, you're even willing to talk about Christmas at right. that point. Right. But we talk about the second coming of Jesus. Right. And you're yeah. just going, wait, what? And we're not using revelation. But when you pair with hope. Yeah. Then it, you understand it and it fits more. You, you say you don't use Revelation. In ours, when we're doing the Isaiah passages, I am going to tie in Revelation oh, at the end of it. You. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, because there is hope there and it's really cool. Yeah. So that's the, you know, the, and it, you bring up another good point, though, that each week has a s- specific theme. <clears throat> and the, the first one is hope. Yeah. So uh, that kind of helps us understand this anticipation. Uh, of the arrival of Christ. Right. And so uh, it's it's a fun process. I think it gives us a lot. And then it also helps us when you think about anticipation, you're not just, you're just not removing calendar dates, looking forward to Christmas Day, right. but you're building in some of this spiritual anticipation in mm-hmm. your own life so that along the way you gain insight into the story. Right. Uh, and it's, uh, it, a very familiar story, but one that we continue to to let teach us. Yeah, and it's I love it. Well, and one of the things from your perspective that I've enjoyed is that students understand it now. Right, and and it's funny when you'll say things. We we've, we've done lectionary for a while, and we've done the the Christian calendar. So they've even connected. I can ask them. So where do we get the palm leaves that we? Where do we get the ashes for Ash Wednesday? They say, oh, well, that's mm-hmm. the palm, li- palm leaves from previous Palm Sunday. Right. Like they click with those things now because we've done it long enough that they get it and they know it. And even getting into the Advent candles, I mean, it's always, can I light the hope one? Can I light it? Because they know what they are and they know the pink one is joy. Right. They know that's different. Yeah. And so. <laughs> and that's, I think, why I, probably one of the reasons that that's uh, special to us is because we were trying you and I, as well as other adults in our church, it's still not a part of our past. Right. Right. And fresh. so it's still there's that little bit of disconnect, I think, to sort of remembering and focusing on mm-hmm. it uh, from year to year. Obviously, we're, uh, in, we're in, embedded into it and mm-hmm. in, in what we're trying to do, so we're more a little more thinking through that. But uh, it's cool to see them grasp that at an early age. Yeah, definitely. I love it. So... Well, it's good back. Good to get back into our rhythm. We've talked a lot about things that are going on in our church, but the series that are coming up will be through Ad, be Advent. I encourage you to follow along mm-hmm. with our readings. Uh, we don't mention that often enough, probably. The readings that we provide through our social media and in our program on Sundays are actually lectionary text that lead up to the sermon that will be right. preached on Sunday. So if you follow those readings, uh, then you're well-versed in the overall concept of what's going to be talked about on Sunday. I see what you did there. Well what? versed in yeah. the Advent reading. That was, that was completely by accident. Yeah. It's also in the Bible app. See, we do the events. Yeah. Those are in there also. Okay. You can save the event on Sunday and it, you'll have that saved in there so you'll know what they are in your Bible app. Okay. So a lot of ways for us to stay connected. We look forward to that. Glad, Teek, glad that you're back. It's uh, good to be back. And good fun to have this conversation with call you. call somebody about my chair. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll see who moved your chair and get back to you, okay? <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. See you at 1030. See you then.